Let's give him something to cheer for now. Bowers tips it to himself, and he'll score. Touchdown, Georgia. Time now for the College Football Inquirer. Here's Pat, Russ, and Dan. Uh, welcome to the pod, and we welcome Ross back. Uh, he was out last show. He returns and gets right into one of our favorite things because we're vicious, mean, negative, vulture media members. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Coach's hot seat. Oh, You're already firing oh, yeah. people. We ain't even started. <laughs> Don't you know, Ross, that every camp was amazing and an astounding number of leaders stepped mm-hmm. up and the guys worked in the weight room like never before, and uh, the offensive coordinator is a genius, and everything's looking good. Don't you know that yeah, when you I set do. up this? I'm going to fire you. I'm going. I'm well aware. I'm well aware. The offense is going to be more explosive. The defense has changed the front. You know, they're going from a three-four to a four-three, and they're going to just shut down everything. And yeah, the new strength coach has got the boys looking good. <laughs> <laughs> more aggressive. More aggressive on me. Uh, we'll combine that with Pat's more uh, passive aggressive, most intriguing list, which <laughs> often is the same thing. <laughs> eh, it's a little Pat, bit of nuance, a little nuance there. Pat trying to be polite. I'm intrigued to see whether you'll be fired, <laughs> is really the issue. Eh, there's usually some of that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. We want to do a draft? Who's got the hottest seat? Let's do that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Ross, it's an you easy, can start. It's an it's easy number one pick. Uh, uh, Neil Brown at West Virginia is uh, certainly got, I would think, the uh, the hottest seat in America entering the 2023 season. Um, I think it, the stat is, I think Neil has lost more than seven games, but he hasn't won, I think, more than more than seven games. Um, so he's been yo-yo and kind of right there in that uh, six and six realm. And uh, he's got a new athletic director and he's going to have a new president. Gordon Gee is going to retire. So a lot of leadership changes. And, you know, usually that comes with uh, another change at, at, at football coach. If you're not doing uh, a great enough job, uh, his buyout though is around $13 million. Um you know, I think Ren Baker, the new AD there in the uh, West Virginia leaders, discussed uh, pretty pretty seriously discussed his his uh, job last year and um, kind of let him stick around for a year, so to speak. So big big year for him. It feels like you got to hit that seven or eight win mark to to stick around there. Yeah, he's definitely uh, you know now in this era as well of fire early. Neil needs to have a good September, or else he may not see October, I would say. Uh, and he was really feisty at uh, Big 12 Media Day about how good he thinks they're going to be much better. He was mad they were picked last. Uh, he said, we're going to show. We're going to show you. But tell you what, he opens at Penn State. They mm-hmm. got Pitt in the backyard brawl in game three. That might be it right there. If he loses to both both those two. Uh, you never know. He's also they got and then they go Texas Tech, which a lot of people think could win the Big Twelve, and at TCU. That's a really, really challenging uh, September for Neil Brown. Um, I'm gonna go. If well, I have hold on, second hold on. How, how much money will it take to ride off into the sunset of that little PRT, the little personal <laughs> rapid train? Is that if you get fired from there, do you board the train at the morgue at the <laughs> at the stadium thing and just drive off into nowhere wherever that train runs? Drive off to downtown Morgantown just four wave, minutes away. Just wave away. <laughs> so, you, know, you can find me a quarter mile down the road. Country roads take me home on my personal rapid transit. He's They're gonna run off to the uh Chestnut Brew uh, Brewery that sent me beer. I got beer sent. There to you me, go. So I need to yeah. get a plug in. Sorry, this that's, was all just a ploy. Of course, get a plug in. I saw you shilling. Have you have you sampled the beer yet? I, I did. It was it was excellent. Okay. Did, it was yeah. excellent. So much uh, much much appreciation to the uh, 
the guys at uh, Metro News Sports Line and all that. Anyway, on to your next thing. That's what I'm most intrigued about, Pat. How do you get fired at, at Morgantown? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a mob yeah. hit. They meet me at the station. Uh, that they, the dude brings the musket and takes aim at you, the mountaineer. <laughs> I mean, you better run. Hit the hills. <laughs> Shooting squad. <laughs> okay. All right. Who else is getting fired? Uh, if I'm, I have the next pick. Or yeah. do you want it, Dan? Okay. No, you can have um, it. Go ahead. I'm nice. I don't want to fire anybody. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, Boston College, Jeff Halfley. Things have, uh, they started off, he was at least able to maintain BC's resolute mediocrity for a couple of years. They were six and five, six and six. Uh, last year, they slid to three and nine. They were last in the Atlantic Division. His uh, ACC record the last two years is four and 12. And, you know, BC in one of those cutthroat kind of places where, you know, they'll whack you after two seasons or three or whatever. But after four, if it's declining returns, and I don't think anybody looks at this BC team and says, yeah, they're going to be good. Uh, if I were Jeff Halfley, I would I would be nervous. I'm, I'm looking at the schedule here now, how they start out. Northern Illinois, Holy Cross, they got a chance right there to be 2-0. and Then they bring in Florida State, and then they're at Louisville. I would imagine he's going to be two and two at that point, and then we'll see a lot of jump balls after that. They've got also got the easiest non-conference schedule in the entire Power Five. They play no Power Five opponents out of conference. They play Northern Illinois, Holy Cross, Army, and UConn. That should give him a chance to get to somewhere near bowl eligibility. Uh, it's uh, falling on tough times. It's a tough place to go and, and do it. They got decimated on the offensive line last year with injuries so maybe they can improve that but that schedule is set up for some wins so we'll see we'll see what the appetite is uh at boston college not not the hair train hair uh what do they call it hair Hair trigger hair trigger yeah not the hair triggers up there um i'm gonna go i don't know how we don't know how hot this is it depends it depends on multiple factors but I, I consider Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M to be uh, most intriguing. Mm. Um, and and I feel like his fate is tied with the fate of whatever Steve Sarkeesian is doing over at Texas. And uh, because if Texas has a huge year and they're coming in the SEC, then I feel like they're going to get real twitchy if they're not doing real well over at A&M. So I, and I think if Texas doesn't have as good of a year, maybe they feel a little better about themselves. It's like it's like Bama rush, right? Mm-hmm. You got to you got to <laughs> really how are the, what are the other pledge cl- pledge uh, prospective new members and all that? But uh, seventy million dollar buyout, which would <laughs> presumably be a problem. But there's somebody down in Texas owns an air conditioning uh, empire that's just killing it this <laughs> summer. Yeah, and he's he'll he'll peel that off real quick. And uh, and take care of that. So I consider A uh, and M's got to do better. You can't keep losing four games, five games. Um, I think you know there's just a lot there. The my at Miami. Um, there's the Arkansas game could be tricky. Followed the week later by Bama coming to town, then Tennessee, then South, uh, then they visit Tennessee, then they're at South Carolina, then they're at Mississippi. Um, then Mississippi State, and they close with LSU. There's a there's a a path there to a really really good season. There's also a path there to a whole bunch of uh, it snowballs the wrong way. So I think Jimbo Fisher is going to be uh, super intriguing. Uh, Bobby Petrino maybe maybe not calling plays. Uh, a lot of drama. Yeah, they're they're yeah. definitely one of the most intriguing teams, just given the staff situation for sure. Yeah, how do how do the the alpha male play callers Jimbo and Bobby coexist? And uh, I mean, they can both do the job and do it well. So maybe it works out great, and your offense is a lot better. Um, you know, they brought in that monster recruiting class last year. Some guys made an impact. Some guys were problems, and they're a year older, more mature. Uh, they should be better this year. But I mean, this is. Part of what we're we're basically numb to it in college footballs. We're talking about a seventy million dollar buyout, and it's like, yeah, maybe they'll do it, which is so incredibly ludicrous. And that's why the television contracts are so important, so that people who 
wildly mismanage their money and overpay can then afford to erase their mistakes. That's what this is about to a large degree in terms of just profligate spending. And if A&M does it, fine. But I mean, it, it's just, well, it's, get- it's astounding. We've just, we, we would come to say, yeah, you know, 20 million, 30 million, 70 million, fine. Yeah, this is paid for off the backs of uh, Washington State going, you know, and all that. Yeah. Well, there's also all the assistant coaches contracts. Now everybody's sure. getting two-year deals on those, and uh, the buyouts are enormous. The mistakes. The college football has pl- – college athletics has plenty of money to run football teams. It's, again, it's about having more money than the other guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. about spending enough money to have a football team. It's about spending more than the other guy. And mm-hmm. so – all right, so Jimbo, uh, we'll see. Dan, Dan I thought you were uh, you, you let off that talking about Jimbo by saying Jimbo's future is tied to, and you said Texas, and I thought you were going to say uh, the price of oil per barrel. Uh, because also, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the seventy million, yeah, is a lot, and obviously they have a lot of oil money down there. There's a sin. It depends on who you talk to, whether they believe that A and M will pay that or. Would they? They would certainly try to get into some to try to settle. Uh, I would guess, uh, you know, for two thirds of that or or something like that. I'm sure, but I don't know that Jimbo Fisher would take anything less than what he is owed. So, um, definitely one of the more uh, intriguing things to watch. Okay, I got the next pick. Are we snaking it? Yeah, round two, round two. You All go. Right. Uh, I'm gonna go. We're gonna drop down to the old G five level. Um. And give me a, a former P5 coach, Butch Jones at Arkansas State, is on mm. year three. He's won five games. They went two and ten and three and nine. They two and four uh, in the Sun Belt his his uh, two years, and uh, really needs a, a bowl year here. You know, really needs to show progress and and have a, a bowl year of of some sort. I think the expectation from a lot of people within the industry is that. That he's on his his final season, but you never know. Maybe he'll turn it around and, and have a good year. I think his buyout uh, is around a million dollars, so not uh, not not seventy million. So uh, give me uh, yeah, give me Butch Jones uh, at Arky State. That's a prime job, prime group of five jobs. So yeah, brick by brick has been replaced mm. by loss by loss. <laughs> but. <laughs> records are terrible um i'm also going g5 here second round danny gonzalez new mexico look that's a really hard job but he's not doing well at the hard job uh seven and 24 overall three and 20 in the mountain west one and seven in league play in 21 zero oh and eight in league play in 22 i mean even at new mexico a place that i think they acknowledge it's hard to win you got to do better than that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they were not close in most of their losses. Last. Matter of fact, in none of their losses. Lost by 17, 38, 11, 13, 12, 32, 17, 32, 24, and 17. Not good. When the fifth pick is the New Mexico coach, it tells me <laughs> no one's getting fired. <laughs> well, it's going to be a light year. It's not obvious. Yeah, it's not obvious. I- not that many people knew New Mexico had a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lobos. Uh, oh, Lobos. I'll finish this. Uh, Tom Allen, Indiana, did, mm-hmm. did some mm-hmm. solid work the first, what, four or five years. Mm-hmm. But uh, six and 18 since last two years, Purdue's got a little juice. The Big Ten's getting more and more serious. They got money. People will take that job. Uh, although it's man, it's not easy. I don't know what the expectations are, but you got to do better than six and eighteen. And um, so that would be mine. Would be uh, Tom Tom Allen. Well, let's move on to uh, Pat. Maybe you can just do who who who. You have three, four different lists of who's most intriguing. Who is the single most intriguing person to you uh, in college football right now? Deion Sanders. Really, not mm-hmm. even close. Uh, I mean, we've never seen a program makeover quite like what Coach Prime has done at Colorado. Uh, we've rarely, if ever, seen a hire like Colorado made of Dion. 
coming from FCS uh, HBCU Jackson State uh, to a place where there was absolutely n almost no interest in football at that point. He arrived, and boom, there's now interest. There's major curiosity. Remade the roster unlike anything we've ever seen. 46 incoming transfers, 41 outgoing transfers just since the start of spring practice. Um, and Coach Prime, with his personality, he brought in his son as the quarterback. He brought in a – he's got a two-way star who was the number one recruit in the country in 2021. And uh, they open with TCU, playoff team from last year, and then they play Nebraska. So they have a couple very high-profile games to start his tenure there. I don't expect him to be that good, but I sure am curious to see. Can't wait to see Colorado, which has been a long time since I've said that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. Huge ticket sales there. That's that alone is cool. Also, I just read Mississippi State sold out their full allotment. I think for the first time, or maybe it's the highest allotment that they've ever sold out at, at this much. So, a lot of excitement around that program. Tell you um, what, that's Mississippi State. If you go back and look, at least paid attendance. I don't know about actual butts and seats. They've done well for yeah. many years under many coaches and. Well, I think they're pretty competitive on the field too. Yeah. Oh, well, they're very competitive, but I think they just said there was something I saw. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw it too. I think next year is the year when fans will revolt and no longer watch because of NIL. Maybe it's going to be <laughs> next year. <laughs> year four. We were told it would be immediate. Yeah. Uh, maybe next year. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone will tune in this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ross, do you have a most intriguing anybody? Well, we talked about it a little bit like, uh, you know, the most intriguing program certainly is A&M. And I think the most intriguing guy to watch is Bobby Petrino. I mean, he's kind of back in the big time, so to speak. And, uh, you know, everything I, I kind of hear from inside the A&M program is pretty positive, which isn't a surprise because it's coming from people who are inside the A&M program. Um, but they do say that things are meshing well and Bobby and Jimbo seem to be getting along and and uh you know i just my response to that is let's wait until it's third and six and you're down by three at miami in the third quarter what's going to happen then you know what does just jimbo uh take away the play calling duties and, and after that happens what transpires so uh i'll be I'll be interested to watch it. The thing is, is I, I really actually, you know, and Pat said this, they're really talented and um, I actually expect them to have a, a good year, but, um, but that, yeah, Bo I think Bobby Petrino is, is to me uh, one of the more in intriguing people of uh, 2023 in college football. So I wrote the other day, my, uh, the intriguing Marcus Freeman, where are we going with this? How good could Notre Dame be? Could they be the spoiler this year? Could they be a playoff team? Is this the guy long term? Is it not? What's going on in Notre Dame? So, I won't repeat that. You can go back to the last episode and listen if you if you missed it. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Caleb Williams uh, at USC, returning Heisman Trophy winner. A does he continue to develop and become the number one overall pick? Does he lead USC to the playoff, which they were unable to do last year? does he continue that transition of getting that program a hundred percent back, especially as it's about to go into the big 10. I don't think he's going to be around for that. And finally, does he break the fansville jinx? <laughs> <laughs> this is our new Dr. Pepper, Mr. Dr. Pepper, which in lieu of the, uh, he would have been on the video game and they made that, but, um, he, uh, he becomes the, uh, third consecutive Heisman Trophy winner to appear yeah. in the commercial. Oh, wait, wait. No, it was DJ Uyagalale who did Oh, he didn't win the Heisman. Heisman. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Bryce Young, second consecutive. Yep. My bad. DJ will take the We'll get to we'll get yeah. to a missing <laughs> He'll Heisman give it to in DJ. a second. He'd probably take it. <laughs> yeah, he can get Reggie Bush's that's kicking around somewhere <laughs> so we'll mm. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec, but uh, yeah, he follows DJ and uh, and Bryce Young. So, Pat, what what's the what's the word here on this? You broke this important news. Um, <laughs> sources. <laughs> My source was Caleb Williams and Dr. Pepper. Wow. How about that? Sources so, deep within inside Fansville, the city. 
<laughs> you can't yeah. really wasn't be sure. Right. Wasn't Sheriff Fansville Bosworth the one where Les Miles wasn't Les Miles in Fansville at some point, and he was like on the roof of something? Do you you guys remember this? It is it, it it was the most ridiculous scene uh, ever. <laughs> but he was on the roof and he's making some weird face, typical Les Miles. That was a few years ago. Anyway, right. tangent. <laughs> I don't remember that. Sheriff Boswell will be on this. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Bosworth. Les yeah. should have been in it. I'll say that this. It's really good yeah. commercials. They are good. Yeah, I still, I still think they should hire me for a couple. Yeah, I still do. Funny. But I like the transfer portal. Yeah, right. transfer, transfer portal. Transfer portal, the wave. One. I mean, they, they're clever. I mean, they, even down to the details, they had the one last year where they were trying to watch a game on streaming, and they're like, yep. who has the password? You know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's just like uh, Cap it, it locks, was a very yeah. real fan experience. So, <laughs> yeah, anyhow. Sorry, hold on. Google Les Miles Fansville. Uh, oh, no. it, it, people who are listening, and yes, he's on there. I think he's a mechanic. I believe really? he looks like a mechanic or a hardware store worker, and you know he's making the typical goofy faces. And there's one scene where he is on the top of <laughs> he's on the top of a building, and he has stolen, I assume, the national championship trophy, which is with him as he's making some weird smirking face. Well, he won uh, one, didn't he? Won. I mean, he did. Yeah, he maybe did. that's his. There yeah, he was a mechanic. That's right. He did have the or a hardware store. It was a hardware, mechanic, I think it's yeah. a hardware store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two thousand seven. The the undefeated in regulation. LSU. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that was a BCS trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Not the playoff, yeah. but yeah, the great marketing camp, but undefeated in regulation. Those two overtime losses didn't count. <laughs> uh so but, good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, Caleb is fighting the Fansville Jinx. DJ was the original NIL player on the uh, commercials and then promptly had a really struggling season. Um, his first year as a full starter at Clemson, and now, of course, he's at Oregon State. And then Bryce Young last year. Bryce Young had a fine season, but Alabama didn't. Lost two games, only the second time they'd done that since, like, 2010 and in the regular season. And... Uh, Obviously, didn't make the playoff, didn't make the SEC championship game. We'll see if Caleb uh, can defeat that jinx. Uh, he says he thinks they're high-powered on both sides of the ball, which would be a distinct change on the defensive side. They were very low-powered, low, not very physical last year. They upgraded, they brought in like a whole new defensive line, basically, via the portal. Lincoln Riley's uh, done a lot of work there. But, I mean, Caleb Williams was so fun to watch, and I've had some people say that, they think he's the surest thing NFL QB prospect since Trevor Lawrence and maybe even better than Trevor Lawrence. We'll see how it turns out. But uh, I think that he is, unless unless this season really goes off the rails, I think he's going to be the landslide number one. Or either he, either he goes off the rails or Drake May plays out of his mind. But I think Caleb Williams is the player to watch again this year. Uh, we'll be right back after this. All right. Speaking of USC star players, Reggie Bush, known for his work in the uh, Wendy's commercials. Excellent work. Um, I think they gave him like a fake. They made a Heisman joke last year in that. Um. Uh, during his uh, his stint in that recurring role. We're big fans of the commercials here at the College Football Choir because they show them over and over and mm. over. Mm. Uh, Reggie is going to file a defamation lawsuit, or already has Wednesday. We're It's not, has not been filed a typing here, against the NCAA. Uh, the lawsuit, and it's it's part of his, his attempt to get his Heisman back. Um, but this part is pretty interesting. The lawsuit is based on the NCA maliciously attacking his character through a completely false and highly event offensive statement that was widely reported in the media and st substantially and irrepar irreparably damaged his reputation, uh, said his uh, lawyer. The statement it came out on July 28, 2021, and it, uh, there was people talking about could he get uh, after NIL became legal. Uh, could Reggie get his get get his Heisman back? Now, if you remember, he's involved in uh, uh, various NCAA violations 
um, back uh, when he played. The NCAA vac- ruled him ineligible for his final season. And because he was vacated, the Heisman Trust, which is a separate entity, uh, took back his Heisman. Now, if the, anyone had said, "I want," if the Heisman Trust says, I want your Heisman back, I'd be like, you come get it. But Reggie, much better person than I, handed the trophy back. But now he's saying, look, all the, the kids are getting everything now. Why can't my I get my Heisman back? Um, and so that was the debate because the Heisman people threw it on the NCAA. They're like if they put they reinstate his season, he gets his Heisman back. The the statement said this. Although college athletes can now receive benefits from their names images, and likenesses through activities like endorsements and appearances, NCAA rules still do not permit pay-for-play type arrangements. The NCAA infraction process exists to promote fairness in college sports. The rules that govern fair play are voted on, agreed to, and expected to be upheld by all NCAA members. The issue here is the pay-for-play type arrangements. I have not reviewed Reggie's case, but as I recall he and his family received so-called extra benefits from a couple of uh, would-be marketing executives, um, including housing uh, for his parents and some various money and stuff like that, basically so they could represent him later. It was not a pay-for-play type arrangement. It was, and I'm using NCA uh, thinking, a corruption of his amateur status because he had cashed in uh, I still don't know if agents can pay players. I don't know what the rule is on that. But anyway, the NCA misidentified this arrangement. Uh, that, but this, he, he did not, he was never accused of a pay. Well, it doesn't say he was, you know, it doesn't say he was accused of that. It just says NCA rules still do not permit pay for play. This will be really parsed out. It doesn't say Reggie Bush did pay for play, but it sort of implies it. Uh, the question here is, is this a, 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 an actual lawsuit? Um, I don't know that Reggie's reputation was harmed by this statement. Nobody remembered it. He's in Wendy's commercials and on national television and beloved even more. Uh, fans are almost completely on his side. Give the guy his Heisman. I think OJ has his Heisman, doesn't he? OJ still have his? <laughs> OJ does, to the best of That was not, not an NCAA violation. He was never accused of an NCAA violation. Many other Many things. other violations. Mm, yeah. Many other violations, but not NCAA so uh, that's where we're at. Uh, statement was completely false uh, and highly offensive. It seems like there's a whole bunch of like people taking words uh, that don't really matter. I don't know. It's, there's a lot here. I don't know who's wrong or right in terms of this lawsuit, but the overall arch is I'm going to keep putting pressure, and I'm going to I'm going to pinata the NCA, which is a pretty good pin. I mean, in the in the Q rating of Reggie Bush versus NCA. Uh, Reggie's mm-hmm. slightly more well thought of by the fans. Uh, Pat, what are your thoughts on this? NCAA approval rating is lower than <laughs> any president has ever been. Yeah. Herbert Hoover, maybe. I, I don't know. But no, I mean, like the, this to me is majoring in minors. And, and again, yeah, just kind of grinding an ax because um, I don't I don't see like true defamation here. Uh, maybe some imprecise wording. Okay, but but malicious intent would seemingly need to be the standard for a for a public person like Reggie Bush. And I don't see malicious intent here from the NCAA. But still, this is a dumb statement from the NCAA. Here's here's what would have me, to me been the easy answer to this. If, if somebody came to me for a statement, a that's the Heisman Trophy situation. They can decide about that. Our rules are not retrofitted for what they are now to past violations, period. End. Goodbye. That's what I would say. You know, uh, instead you go down the down the road here, open it up, and it's like all of a sudden you're editorializing about a cheeseburger. You're saying too much, say less. But I don't. I'm not sitting here saying poor Reggie Bush. I feel so badly that the NCAA termed this pay for play instead of just saying impermissible benefits. Whatever. Yeah. On on this is a pretty small thing. Yeah, that he's trying to turn into a big yeah. thing, and he's focusing on the big thing by using a small thing. But it's like, go ahead, go ahead Ross. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I, I, it, uh, I can't imagine this being successful, right? Uh, yeah. In 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 court, uh, but it is just a way for him to, I guess, put 
uh, air his grievances, so to speak, I guess, against the NCAA. I know how frustrated that he is. And this is, I don't know, I, I don't know what you guys think, but uh, this is a debate depending on who you ask. I mean, it seems like the public seems to be swinging into, into, you know, into the sport of give Reggie his Heisman back when that wasn't necessarily the case just like even eight to ten years ago, I feel like, six to eight years ago that, you know, but we're seeing public support completely swing for uh, like, you know, athletes' rights and pay for play and stuff like that. So I'd imagine, you know, 70 percent or, or so of the public would believe that he should have his, his Heisman back. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's like. I think you're, you're great. You're ma- majoring in minors. It's like this, there's this, this mistake led to this mistake, this, this mistake, or this, this rule. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't know, unless you get performance enhancing drugs, I, I don't really big on like, I've never been big on the idea of vacating seasons and mm, vacating yeah. the record book. Oh, this team didn't actually make the sweet 16. Like really, I, you know, they were there. It's, and I've never been big on this, like, I got to keep this guy out of the Hall of Fames. Like, these things are museums, or they're, they're just the history of the game. Like, it's the history of the game. Reggie Bush was unbelievable that season. And for the Heisman people to bend to the NCA's rules and then pretend that they have to follow these NCA rules, to me, is the cop-out. It's your trophy. If you want Reggie Bush to have the trophy, if you think Reggie benefited somehow performance wise because his parents were living in a house rent free in San Diego or they got a little, you know, they got a couch or there was some money. Um, okay. I don't think that was it, but <laughs> I just like it. I just, unless it's PEDs, I don't, I don't know why we sit there and pretend Reggie Bush wasn't the best player in the country that year. Well, so, I, I mean, a friend of mine, the rules were call, the rules though. Huh. Yeah. A friend of mine likes to call the Heisman trophy, the Heisman peace prize, you know, like the no, but like we've, we've conflated it with this, uh, you know, some mm. superior character or whatever. And a lot of the Heisman winners have had quite high character. But when you go start going down that road, you you get into a, a very kind of complicated, tricky sort of calculus. Of, well, this person was a good person. Oh, wait, but that person wasn't a good person. They broke the NCAA rules, you know. And, and again, to your point, I mean, O.J. Simpson still has his trophy. I mean, do we really want to do that? <laughs> but, the, right, the, right. you know, the, the Heisman has, has really kind of – Perhaps by its own doing, perhaps by other people's doing, elevated itself to some to uh, try to mean more than actual good football player. Yeah, OJ's a good example. Like I wouldn't take OJ. He was he was awesome. I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember the season, but guy could play football. Yeah, you know things <laughs> things went awry. Yeah. It still happened. Yeah, that, I mean, yes. I mean, it had nothing to do with anything. Like whatever. Right. He was. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I think that, I mean, look, we're laughing last week about the Heisman ceremony of Johnny Manziel looking coked out at the, at the Heisman's thing next to Manti Teo, who he just had a resurrected girlfriend and looks like it's all going to come undone. And Colin Klein just sitting there going, what, you know, I come in third, going back to Kansas, people going, Hey, Colin, how was the weekend? Those two dudes are weird, man. They are freaked out. <laughs> Like it's the highs Reggie Bush, give him his Heisman. I don't, I, the NCAA, I, it's just so complicated because no, everyone wants the emotional response, right? The NCAA can't just sit there and say, okay, we're now forgiving all rules because there's going to yeah. be coaches that will immediately say, I lost a $14 million contract because you accused me of having my friend who runs the oil well buy a car for our star player. Right. And if the rules no longer apply and we're, we're vacating all past decisions, where's my 14 million? You know, like you can see where this is going. If they're going to sue over supposedly Reggie Bush's reputation was harmed by a, this ridiculous statement when clearly it is not, he's more popular than ever. And he's on 
national TV and a national spokesman. And uh, all, I mean, there's no way they're going to be able to prove that um, right. any any harm. Then what are these guys going to sue? I mean, they will be buried. They can't go back. You can't go back then and say, oh, all well, the rules didn't exist at the time. That was the rule. Mm -hmm. That was the rule. We've now changed that rule. But so I think this is on the Heisman Trust uh, to give Reggie Bush his, his trophy back. That's yeah, be that's my. exactly that's a, go talk to the Heisman people. Leave the yeah. NCA out of it and tell the NCA to be quiet. NCA is not going to not going to do much. All right. Another interesting story on an NCA situation uh, or I don't know what Jaden Rashada. The uh, the trials and tribulations of Jaden Rashada. Pittsburgh, California, uh, four star recruit class of 2023 famously commits to the University of Florida is later revealed that he was uh, had a deal, even a contract, with this outfit called the Gator Collective. This was all last winter. We covered it extensively because it's pretty wild. Uh, the Gator Collective was trying to pretend that it was a, a, a well-financed uh, operation that was aiding Florida recruiting. They seem to be really the answer to the John Ruiz Miami life wallet, <laughs> which... <laughs> Has also already hit hard times, <laughs> yeah, to say the yeah. least. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was really a battle of it was quite a battle of uh, geniuses here. Anyway, the Gator Collective told the Rashada family they'd pay him thirteen point eight million dollars over four years to play at at Florida. Thirteen point eight million dollars. By comparison, Will Levis, the Kentucky star, who's the thirty third pick of the NFL draft. Just signed a four-year deal with the Titans, worth nine point five four million. <laughs> okay, uh, so thirteen point eight was a little outside the. Uh, Should have raised some red flags. It sounded too good to be true. It was. It was. It was garbage. Uh, Rashada was supposed to receive five hundred grand last December as a upfront payment, and then two fifty a month, two hundred and fifty thousand a month. As a freshman. Okay. That's so he good money. He, good. Yeah. Good money. Good money. Uh, he would have had 3.5 million in the first year without even knowing whether he could play. Like, you got to take that deal. I know they're yeah. they're shady, but you got to look into that deal. He was yeah. then gonna get 291 as a sophomore a month, 375,000 a month as a junior, and 195,833 and 33 cents as a senior. All he had to do is sign a couple autographs and make a couple appearances. I mean, this is the first year, three and a half million. Like that is life-changing money. And so, yeah, you're gonna listen to that. Well, it turns out it was nothing. They couldn't make the 500 payment. Rashada Sowers on Florida, never enrolls, ends up uh, at Arizona State. He becomes, Florida becomes a punchline. He becomes a little bit of a punchline. He becomes a cautionary tale. He becomes a political pawn. People are screaming to Congress that they got to do something because Jaden Rashada uh, almost got tricked uh, or thought, of, you know, at least explored. He didn't really do anything. He explored it and when it didn't come through, he, he left. Anyway, he goes to Arizona State. He has, uh, by all accounts, poured himself into being a very good quarterback. And earlier this week was named the day one true freshman starter for the Sun Devils. Um, which, to my point, brings up that nothing bad really happened to Jaden Rashada uh, in the global scheme of college football. It sucks for Florida. They lost their big recruit because they had some shady people representing them. But that's a Florida issue. At the end of the day, Jaden Rashad is going to be playing football in week one. So, um, but thoughts on this? Uh, it's a hell of a quick redemption for Jaden Rashad, I guess. I'm pretty, uh, I don't know the kid, but I'm pretty happy. He's got to be pretty happy that rather than wallow in what did happen to him, he just went out and and showed what he's capable of doing. Pat, your thoughts on this whole uh, circle that's gone very, very quick story. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited to watch him play uh, and see, see how he does. And to your point, yeah, I'm glad the, the scourge of NIL did not uh, ruin him um, in his, his brief sojourn there. You were going through those numbers 
And I was flashing back to thinking of Sean Miller talking about Will Wade ruining the market by overpaying for players. Right, right. <laughs> That's what Florida was was attempting to do or, or allegedly doing. So, anyway, the one thing I want to see now from Jaden Rashada, and I, I mean, I hope he settles in at Arizona State and has a fine career at Arizona State. That's where he wants to be. He's played for three high schools. He's committed to three different colleges a little bit of constancy and continuity in one place, and let's see how good he can be. Yeah, it's kind of uh, a surprise. You know, usually a lot of these starting quarterback battles, competitions, whatever, are are uh, y- 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 the, the, there's a starter, there's a favorite, a pretty heavy favorite, and you know who almost always is going to win the job or, or has the lead starting the competition. And in this case, I think that was – Drew Pine, uh, no, the Notre Dame uh, transfer that came in. I think most people thought he was the favorite. He was going to win. This is, really isn't that intense of a competition. He's had some injuries. And he did. He had yeah. hurt his hamstring, yeah. I think, in the first or second scrimmage, fall scrimmage. He hurt his hamstring, and that kind of flipped things a little bit in give it up for right. Jaden Rashada stepped up in – obviously stepped up in – and he – Obviously, has talent, uh, you know. Um, I don't know about thirteen million dollars uh, of talent, but I guess we'll <laughs> see soon enough. Yeah, Arizona State has said that there's no NIL deal for him to go out there, but um, I guess you know everyone talks about how wild, wild west it is, how terrible this new era is, all this stuff. We just did two stories back to back. Reggie Bush is still stuck on a scandal under the old rules. Jade Rashada was able to shake it off. Like Reggie Bush got hooked up with some, with some less than reputable guys who were trying to get him to be the, you know, whatever, to get a deal with Reggie Bush because of who he was. And Reggie Bush is what in his late thirties. Now he's still in the, in, he's still getting dragged down by this thing. He's still yeah. holding press conference and suing. Jaden Rashada got in, got involved with some shady guys who tried to cash in on him and help him, and it didn't work out. And he just said, "Okay, I'm out," and now he's playing football. You can run to Congress and say this guy is the example of how we got to have guardrails, we got to have protections, we got to have the protection is the freedom to do what he wants to do. The protection is the lack of guardrails. Yeah, I mean, Jaden Rashad is fine. He's a starting quarterback in the league with the best quarterbacks in the whole country. And if he ever wants to go back to Florida, he can still transfer there. He could, you know, he could he go somewhere else. Like I mean, I, I kind of agree with you, Pat. I'd like to see him dig in, say, "Look, I'm going to be. I got Kenny Dillingham here as my coach. He's supposed to be the quarterback coach. This guy took me off the bounce, and now it's you know, but." You don't need Congress to create. Go. Why? The 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 leaders of the sport want to look backwards and get. They want to hold on to the past. The past was a disaster. (laughs) One of the most beloved and greatest football players we've had this century is still at war with the NCAA and the Heisman. He's making mocking commercials on Wendy's. Jaden Rashad is just like, all right, I didn't get that money, but guess what? I wasn't worth that anyway. I mean, that was ridiculous. So, ah, let's go play at Arizona State. Did that come up at Congress? Did anyone talk about this at Congress, <laughs> Ross? Dan oh, no. Soapbox, look out. <laughs> they're still there. They're at, Congress is busy out erecting the guardrails. They're, like Senator Tuberville has a hammer and he's got some nails in his mouth. He's pulling them out. All of them. them in. Setting up those guardrails. Jaden Rashada is the reason you don't add things. I don't know. Seems like it's working out to me. All right. We promised that we would do this. Uh, we did the the musical stylings of Van Hayden. The <laughs> Ross missed <laughs> that. Oh, boy. What are y'all talking about? Uh, uh, these, these four dudes in Iowa <laughs> who uh, <laughs> took many of our stories. to Iowa. We yeah, have, we I know we have a Iowa fascination on this show with Iowa, don't we? No, they're fascinating. They're they're <laughs> I mean they're not for any good reason. Not not 
in a disturbing way many of the times. But yeah. But hey, you know, whatever. They uh four guys decided to form a band uh based on uh the persona of Hayden Fry, the great Iowa Hawkeye mm. coach. Uh, but they also became a tribute band to Van Halen, so they named themselves Van Hayden. <laughs> and they have songs like Punt instead of Jump. Uh yeah, I did see uh, okay. I fourth did and see inches, that, yeah. go ahead and punt, very yeah. clever. Uh, different stuff. Anyway, we promised the Pack Four song, the yes. sad remnants of the Pack Four. Oh, no. the, the four is like the right number for a band, right? Like the Beatles were four. What do they call those guys? The Fab the Four Fab or four. something? Yeah. The Fab Four, the Beatles. This is the Ed Sullivan. We're, this is like the Ed Sullivan. This is when the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan. That was a big show, right? That was the big moment. We are going to, this is like that moment for whatever the hell this band that is singing a Pack Four sad song right there's dan that new burn dan burn that... is our artist oh okay dan burn mm -hmm. okay it's like that new you seen that new country guy he just sits in his yard <laughs> and sings about <laughs> like in front of his like van he's like great it's soulful man he's soulful he's singing it's the big hit this we're gonna launch uh this this play this song we're launching it like that watch out <laughs> itunes ratings I am a fan of the big four, of the big four, I'm a fan. Washington State, Oregon State, Cal and the Stanford Band. The big four has a glowing history, I'm happy and proud to say. Joe Cap, John Elway, Gardner Minshew, TJ, who's mine, Jade. This fall, maybe you'll be watching Bama, Michigan, Ohio State. But I'll be tuned to the big four in the shadow of the Golden Gate. How could anybody look away? How could anybody not care? The Beavers and the Cougars, the Cardinal and the Golden Bears. All right, all right I got to cut this. <laughs> I got to cut this. I apologize to Oliver Anthony. Um, I apologize to Oliver Anthony, who's that guy in the in the woods singing. Okay, that we have played a lot of bad songs on this show. <laughs> that is the worst of our song. That, <laughs> that makes can, that makes Ray Ames sound uh, like Taylor Swift. If you can make a rhyme out of T.J. Hushmanzada's name, you've done pretty yeah. well. I Bring give it up the Gardner credit. Gardner Minshew, that was good. <laughs> Joe Cap. I mean, come on. In the shadow of the Golden <laughs> Gate, Dan. Our dude worked here. He worked hard to come up with that rhyme scheme. Sad times for the big the big four. Is that what they're calling themselves? <laughs> that's what that's what he's calling it. Yeah. So uh. <laughs> big four as of uh, Wednesday morning, still wandering the wilderness, trying to figure out what they're going to be in twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah. This is a never ending saga. Episode whatever we're or day whatever day. Uh, yeah. What day are we on? We're getting close to. <laughs> Isn't it? It's been two weeks, right? It's been, has it been three weeks? Oh, it's it's more than yeah. We're closing in yeah, on three. three. It was weeks. August fourth when everything blew up. Yeah, one, Ooh. two, three. Golly, yeah, we're we're uh, we're gonna make three weeks on Friday um, that uh, that this happened. So, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I I don't. I don't really have much of an update either on it. You know, it's like it's got kind of gone quiet, and Stanford seems to be holding hostage Oregon State and Washington State as they continue to try to knock down the door of Big Ten and ACC, um, even though they've been told no, it seems like, repeatedly. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summation of it. And then people got excited because there was a regularly scheduled ACC president's meeting mm, on Tuesday, yeah. and then it got canceled. And what does that yeah. mean? Does that mean anything? Eh, I don't have anybody telling me it means anything. So. No. No. I just don't know how long Stanford and Cal can wait and how long they can hold Oregon State and Washington State hostage like this, like you said. So, like, you know, I mean, time is ticking towards figuring out how to even schedule a season your schedule. or all your seasons. All right. your seasons and all About your About to be sports. less than a year. Yeah, Six yeah. games. They have all those teams, all those four teams, that I believe, have six games scheduled for the 2024 season. They have three games against themselves and three – non-conference games right now so that's a half of a schedule and there's nobody available to schedule 
right now. I mean, they're, you know, right. 12 months out, there's nobody available to schedule. So, yeah, it, it so that makes one of Stanford's options, which is independence, right, really difficult because you'd have to, I don't, you know, somebody suggested if Stanford were to do that and try to get up to like a 10 or 12 game schedule, they'd, they'd have to pay for opponents, a future opponent, potential future opponents that they were try- they're trying to schedule, they have to pay for them to get out of their games against like FCS teams, right? And to right. schedule Stanford, it, it just, it's a mess. Yeah, it's terrible. Plus all the other sports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, right. you, you play like 25, <laughs> yeah. like 20 soccer games. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, it's not good. All right, go back to singing. Maybe I shouldn't have made fun of the song. The poor guy's traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be Jager nice. Tr- Bond, I think I'm going to be nicer this year. I think oh, I'm going to be nicer. Come on. Don't do um, that to the people. All right. I I'll be honest with you. The week 0, I'm supposed to we're supposed to do race for the case and we're going to we're going to, but this pod's going to go a little long because I I forgot that we had to start the race for the I'm a little out of practice. I need a <laughs> I need a, a scrimmage. <laughs> um, but we're going to get to it. But I have to get to this story because it we're going back to Iowa and I just, once again, the people of Iowa have both <laughs> brought me great amusement and then pulled back the curtain that much of it is a lie. They're just, they're just, uh, they're just not honest people in Iowa. What have Damn. they done? I, the Iowa butter cow. Oh yeah. At the state fair every year, they make a cow out of butter. Okay. And this year they also made a Caitlin Clark butter. Butter Caitlin Clark. I don't even know how to say. I don't want to say that the wrong way. I don't know. <laughs> Caitlin Clark statue made out of butter. Yeah. A great Iowa g- pl- basketball player. And I assumed that when you say you make a cow out of butter, they literally just make it out of butter. Now, obviously, it's refrigerated and you go by at the state fair, Iowa State Fair, They're the great musical state fair, <laughs> you want know, corny musicals. Anyway, uh, a a live cam of the from the state fair. Wait a second. It says Illinois State Fair. Mm-hmm. Is it Illinois? Oh, wait a minute. It was Iowa. Uh oh. Oh, hold on. I have to cut all that out. <laughs> hold on. This is why I did the Maybe I take it back. Maybe Iowa did it right. Okay, there's a picture of the Illinois State Fair butter cow. Okay. We have an ongoing saga. <laughs> Illinois has a butter cow. Do they have a butter cow? This this um, this is terrible podcasting. <laughs> anyway, they have a mesh. They have a mesh. They build a, a, a infrastructure in the shape of a cow and then they slap some butter on top, like fondant. Like like it's it's just like it's like icing. Yeah. <laughs> But this might be from, see, social media said it was Iowa, but it's actually might be Illinois. I did I find the the butter cow. Yeah, Illinois, Springfield, Illinois butter cow, August 9th, 2023. They're uh, taking it down yeah. and you can see the mesh. Is that how yeah. Iowa's is made? Uh, Illinois is a bunch of liars then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine Iowa's made that way, Dan. Iowa's too pure <laughs> for that. I okay, would I hope- may or... I may or may not uh, 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 have an apology coming to the people of Iowa who build the cow. I don't know. We need info on the butter cow in Iowa now. We need Me info. and Reggie Bush are searching for the truth. <laughs> hey, I'm ready say. to vacate this. What is going on? Butter cows. This the- Illinois one's a fraud, though. Illinois, get your... Uh, you're much bigger than Iowa. You should have more butter. You have more butter in Illinois than Iowa. <laughs> I am concerned, though, that the butter Caitlin Clark, what if it's covering real Caitlin Clark? Has anybody seen her in the last I, couple of weeks? That's a good point. I, she's probably I mean, been working out. She looks, I hope she, she, looks like I hope she, she hasn't been mummified inside a thing of butter. You know? <laughs> what? I, I always wondered if the Quad Cities would go to war and, like, have a... <laughs> do you want to be grouped with the other three, the other two, at least, on the other side? What yeah, do we it's got? It's two on two, right? Bettendorf versus Davenport or something like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm now totally confused at what happened. I think Sean just sent us a. Uh, yeah, he did. Butter 2013 sculpture of butter cow companion sculpture was hell? a tribute to the Lincoln Highway. Oh my God! It's <laughs> butter Abe Lincoln. Lincoln. Butter Abe Lincoln. 
a You'll butter have too much like... too much time and too much butter on your hands. Yeah. All right. So I, I apologize to our listeners, um, but I, apparently you guys like this stuff. Our, our show keeps getting more popular and it gets worse every week. I, and, yeah. I, and I'm the I'm people love I'm the problem. Stuff. They love to see train I'm the wrecks, problem. Dan. It's me. But we're, let me tell you what. I'm not falling. Accurate. At least I'm not falling for the social media has slandered Iowa by taking mm -hmm. the Illinois picture. Mm -hmm. Now, Iowa. All right. We're going to get to the bottom of it next week. I promise you that. But all right. Let's pick some games. And get me pick out of the water cow situation. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Butter cows. All right. Race for the case. Speed round. Let's not spend a lot of time on this. All right. Yeah. You know, zero. I don't think you have to worry about that. We're, uh... Okay. Navy at Notre Dame. Not at Notre Dame. Navy versus Notre Dame. Games at, uh, in Dublin, 2.30 p.m. on NBC. Uh, Irish are giving 20 and a half. Pat. Yeah, remember I so the what there was a game in it was in I Ireland where there was a beer shortage or something before or they like remember oh, was I that Nebraska what, Northwestern? I think mm. where like there was a power outage, but they just gave away the beer, right? Which was actually yeah, that's uh, right. an yeah, that's excellently right. wonderful mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I hope the same thing happens so that the Navy and Notre Dame fans can drink free beer. Um, give me Navy to cover for two reasons. Um, Navy shortens games, and this will be a shorter game than ever because we've changed the clock rules. And so Notre Dame, I looked it up, has been averaging about 12 fewer plays against Navy than their other opponents for the last three years, the last three times they've played Navy. If, you take, uh, if you're giving them f fewer plays and now the game's just going to be shorter by nature, I think it's going to be harder to run up a big score. So I am taking the midshipmen to lose by less than 20.5. I gotta say that's pretty good damn analyst analysis. I, right I know. There. I, I don't have anything. That. I'm impressed. I mean, uh, he, he's got all these numbers and stats and actual reasons. He is the uh, I mean, I just, Clark Butter statue yeah, of this podcast. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I ain't I ain't got nothing except just gimme Navy also. I, I Pat's convinced me. <laughs> that's dangerous. Sean. I think I'm going to go with Navy also. There might be too much shtick about Notre Dame going and playing in Dublin uh, to open up the season. That could be a distraction. So I'll go with uh, Navy to cover the 20 and a half. He said shtick I was, there. Shtick. Yeah. I was going to give, I was going to go Navy before, but now I'm going to take lone <laughs> Irish. I'll take it. I'll there take it. Sam, they're going to air it out for Sam Hartman and all that. Uh, yeah. All right. Big. <laughs> Big primetime ESPN game. UMass at New Mexico State. This is fantastic. ESPN, 7 p.m. <laughs> Aggies giving six and a half. Can the Minutemen go down there and, and get it done in Las Cruces? Uh, Ross? Uh, Just pick a team. You know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. This is brutal. I'm like, I've got Phil Steele in front of me. I'm like... You know, should I really? Does it worth me going to the page? No, it's not really. <laughs> Give me UMass. Let's go, Minutemen. Hey, you don't go into Las Cruces and just walk <laughs> in there expecting victory, man. You go in there into the high desert, and Jerry Kills got him going. Maybe I wonder if he, uh, it's probably going to be way too hot to wear that Serapi thing that he wore uh, for their bowl game, but that was cool. Uh, that Jerry Kills improved the program dramatically. Give me the Aggies. Come on, NMSU. Cover six and a half. The number one agricultural school in the U.S. <laughs> does not <laughs> fail to cover. <laughs> I am taking UMass in this game. Well, if if they can grow anything in southern New Mexico, then they really yeah. deserve to be yeah. the number one uh, team in the country. All right, so I'm torn here. First of all, I got all, still got these Minutemen fans mad at me because they say I hate my my team. Um, I say they give us plenty of reason to not. I mean, what am I sporting? Uh, New Mexico State also once sent me whiskey, so there's that. But I actually think Jerry Kill, yeah. I'm taking him, and they could win like nine, ten games. They could win like nine games this year. Mm. Like keep that an eye happens. on these guys. As if you want to bet, keep an eye on New Mexico State. Okay, they have got a, a favorable schedule. The team is getting better. They got a big time coach, and uh, I just they, they got a lot of potential this year. We'll see. 
I, that I, whiskey, I can't by the way, is great. Uh, what is it? Something it is guns good. or uh, guns pistol up Pete or, or pistol. pistol Pete, whatever. Yeah, it's, it was good. It's really good. Yeah. yeah, it's really good whiskey. Yeah, excellent stuff. They were way ahead of their time on that. Uh, so that's good. All right, so we're uh, we're there. All right, two more. We're only doing four this week. Ohio at San Diego State, the almost Pac-12 member. Mm. Um, they could have been Pac. They could have been the Big Five. Pac-5. They could have been the song. That's right. The great memories. Um, Ohio at San Diego State. San Diego State is giving two and a half, 7 p.m. on FS1. So you can toggle back and forth between uh, Ohio at San Diego State and UMass at, at New Mexico State. Uh, Pat? I'm going to take Ohio here. Um, I just, I, I, Curtis Rourke, their quarterback, is really good. He injured his knee late last year, he has been cleared to go. I mean, you look at his stats. His career stats are really impressive. And he's, they've got this whole family of Rourke QBs who have played at, uh, at Ohio. And so I am, I am rolling with Curtis Rourke and the Bobcats to go into SoCal and defeat the Aztecs, a basketball school. Uh, <laughs> I'm in basketball school. Uh, I'm going uh, to go with San Diego State at home. Long trip for Ohio. So give me the Aztecs to cover cover the – by field goal. Sean. Yeah, big fan of uh, Curtis Rourke as well. I'm going with uh, Ohio to cover in this. I just think they're a more complete team than San Diego State right now. I, I got no idea. I'll take a San Diego State. <laughs> I like I, I'm not getting talked into Maxion this early. I just uh, yeah. <laughs> Toledo be one. Uh, uh, I'm not getting talked into Maxion this early. All right. San Jose State at USC. Caleb Williams. Uh, game is at 8 p.m. on the Pac-12 network. I think earlier this week, uh, Stuart Mandel, uh, rightly pointed from the Athletic, rightly pointed out, uh, you might want to know why the Pac-12 is falling apart. Mm. USC is on the Pac-12 network with the number six team in the country, and UMass and New Mexico State are on ESPN. <laughs> yeah. That tells you structural problems. Go perfect summation. Yeah, why is USC saying I got to get out of here? Here you go. Yeah, uh, I mean even FS1, San Diego State. Uh, anyway, uh, thirty-one point spread by the Trojans, uh, the USC Trojans, right? Uh, San Jose State's the Trojans too, aren't they? They are. They're the Trojans. No, okay. they're Spartans. Trojans. They're the Spartans. Spartans. Spartans versus Trojans. Oh, the helmets looks the, the, the helmet thingy yeah. looks similar. So this Spart did they ever really fight Spartans and Trojans? Uh they probably did back in the day. Probably a scrap yeah. or two, right? Yeah. Spears Someone, well, Ross, swords. make a pick and then look that up. Okay. Pick a two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh well, I I had already looked it up. Um anyway, okay. Uh a pick <laughs> here. Let's go. Uh, 31 is a lot of points. In San Jose State has put together some good teams just like a few years ago remember they won the conference they went like seven and one i think they played all their games on the road it was covid or something they couldn't play at home it was a wild season i'm gonna say that they they at the very end score and in, in cover this spread so give me sparty the other sparty the san jose state sparty okay pat boy yeah 31's a big number mm. um but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say that USC comes out guns blazing. That they're, you know, they got that high powered offense going. Their defense is better, and they give us a potential playoff flex statement early. They go for they, you know, they're scoring late. They're scoring early. They're not letting up, uh, and and they're gonna cover the cover the big number. San Jose Sean. State has a really fun quarterback in Siobhan Cordero. Uh, and this game also gives me a Hawaii, Michigan, 49 and a half point spread feel uh, that Dan took last year. Mm, I did take that and lost it. It was close, I, it, though. It was close. So this big spread, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to sweat out a little bit. I'm taking San Jose State. 31 is nothing. 49 and a half, though. You got to be. It was like one time they fumbled or so. like Michigan almost had that. That was gutsy. That was gutsy. <laughs> gutsy gets you how much? How much money? All gas, you? no breaks. Yeah. Uh, USC. I, I'm not going to sit here and watch this. I probably won't watch this game. But if I did, I don't want to be sitting there rooting for San Jose State. I think uh, no Dr. Pepper jinx. Not this week. Caleb Williams. 
uh, gets it done. USC uh, covers. I am worried about this clock thing. I don't know how. It's very hard to pick these early games. The transfer portal. Like I don't. Who the heck knows? Yeah. Like, I don't even know who's on these teams. <laughs> like San Jose State. Not even. I mean, that's that's tough. All right, what do we find out about Trojans versus Spartans in the, the, the ancient times? Yeah, the Trojan War unfolded in was between uh, them. Unfortunately, yeah. Greek mythology. Uh, so this isn't real. But um, yeah. uh, you know, maybe it's based in. It's kind of like uh, those movies. This is based on a true story. So maybe. Um, but like Troy, <laughs> Troy, yeah. Troy and Sparta met. Uh, big surprise! Uh, Sparta's king waged war on Troy after uh, his his wife, I believe, uh, left him for the the for some Troy person. Uh, so there was an affair going on, and and they waged war. And as I'm zipping through this Wikipedia page, Helen I still of don't Troy? know exactly who won. I don't know. So. Uh, we're, that's we're it. Bringing great we don't know who won the war. The pod. Yeah, uh, it's like a lot of wars. Okay, yeah. good work. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It ended you. up in a. Let's just say it ended up in a quagmire, kind of like you know, yeah, Vietnam or something. I guess so. All right, the there Greeks won the Somebody. Trojan War. The Greeks did. We don't know. We don't know whether Iowa makes a real butter cow. We don't know who won the Trojan War. We don't know anything. They won the war. They won the war over the wooden horse. That's right. They all shoved themselves in the wooden horse, you know, and wheeled it all in. In this war, yeah. that's right. That was it. Yeah, I forgot about that. How they used forget the, about the, the, Trojan the, the horse. sneak attack. Right. So, okay. Give it up for Troy. And the actually, actually, and Vietnam didn't end in a quagmire. It actually ended in the fall of South Vietnam. Yeah, we're really we're, right. we're we strive for accuracy here. <laughs> Not re- barely. <laughs> all right. Please That's don't fact check this episode, people. Yeah, <laughs> we're get this. This episode is going to get vacated by the NCAA <laughs> uh, for <laughs> lack of accuracy, organization, or uh, anything interesting. I don't know, uh, but we are watching football this weekend. Yeah, and you baby. know you're going to be watching that Minutemen Aggie football. game. You know you're going to tune in. <laughs> Let's go. All right, continue to subscribe, uh, share us on social media. Please tell your friends about us. The season is beginning. Your friends will not have as much fun on the college football season unless you listen to us, unless they listen to us. And then you have you can make fun of us to get, like to each other. You can just be like, these guys are idiots. And yeah, that's pretty much true. Um, it sounds like they spend two minutes preparing for the show. Well, that might be accurate. Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, we'll be back um, sometime Monday. Uh, with uh, with some overreactions and whatever else is getting going. Season is here. We made it. Congratulations. We will talk to you later.